The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour on Friday, the 22nd of September. <clears throat> what we're seeing right now is really not what I wanted to see if I was anticipating some kind of a major low coming in, say, Monday or Tuesday. The day is young. And what I would say is this. Let's just do this backwards. Normally, I'd look at the VIX later, but I'll look at the VIX right now. The VIX index, and this is the volatility index based on options. Um, let's just look at it as a price. You don't even have to know how it's calculated. It doesn't matter. It ran up to exactly the 200-period moving average yesterday. It was a very ugly day. Oh, the S&P got, the S &P got hammered. But look at this. Look at this huge candle. Look at the way it's pulling back today. It's 16.51. It got to the 17s yesterday. Uh, the weekly chart has made a new low over the last two weeks at 12.68, just a tad under the previous lows that were made uh, back in July and August. But what's really important is you see this table here in the volatility index in the monthly chart? Look at this. Just goes back. We were once upon a time... And for the Greece crisis, nobody even remembers that anymore. Forty-eight dollars back in two thousand and uh, August of two thousand and eleven. Um, you know, we've been all over the show. We actually hit eighty-nine back in the bank crisis of October of two thousand and eight. <clears throat> so, within this context, we've been the the majority of the price movement in the volatility index is in the twenties. And then it got raised because of COVID. So it was much, much, the baseline was much high, much higher. And eventually it did things like 53, the China domestic, China, U.S. rates back in August of 2015, it did 53.29. Um, we've got a pullback down to the 884, then the 856 area in uh, 2017. Spirals up to higher yields, uh, uh, just tariffs, uh, China, Saudis, everything. Back it's uh, 50.30. That was right here, February of 2018. <clears throat> pulls back again, pulls back to the 10 ish area, pops up to 36.20 December of 20, 2018. Uh, there again, Fed and yields. China was a big pop-up in July of uh, 2019. It keeps coming back because this is the this is the magnet line for the for the volatility index. So even if we have a major a major uh, some bad news or anything, and the volatility index screams up, and now it's making lower lows for for quite some time. So it's, if it screams up into the 20s, that's a warning to say, ho ho ho, uh, market's going to be pulling back, but. You can't expect a major low from this area here at, at 16, is it right now, 16.57? Uh, or may, I shouldn't say you, you cannot. Things can happen. But the rotational correction that we've been looking at is still ongoing. So with this context, what I was anticipating was there was a chance, and the reason why we still remain short, the down, the short, the uh, um, uh, SMHs, the se semiconductor, uh, ETF. Uh, the reason is that if you're looking at this context, yesterday with that big green candle, we, we hardly ever see a candle on a Friday like that. Look, this is one big green candle here on a Friday, and that was back in August of 2020, August of the week of the 18th. That's a couple of weeks ago. And then the market started to pull back after that high. Uh, so now what we're looking at is within the context of this particular, just patterns, this H pattern, there is always a chance that if it's successful and either just tags the left side low, in this case, the low of 12 point, I think it was uh, 70 something. Yeah, it's 73, 12.73, back the week of the 23rd of June. So it's taken that out, but fractionally and it's closed 
that same week, that's last week, closed above it. And this week it's even higher. And that's saying to me that there is a chance that this dreaded H, which has become so far a successful H, even though it did t take out the left side low, could become a cup formation. So with all those things said, I was anticipating that yesterday with that big green candle, if instead I, I'd said, there's a chance that we'll find some strength today. But what I would like to see, and those are two separate things completely. What I would like to see is the uh, by the end of the day, the volatility index closes up towards the high. In other words, towards uh, yesterday's high of 17 was at 57, 17, uh, 1754. So somewhere in that range, we're at 16, 69. A lot has to happen for that to, to transpire. But that's still my wish. One of the reasons is it's a wish because I'm hoping that if we close ugly, Monday and Tuesday, remember, there was this, this, this expression. It's really just a mantra. It's a, it's a kind of a, wow, what do you call those things? Um, it's just an expression um, that you sell on Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish holiday, the new holiday, and you buy after Yom Kippur. That's the day of fasting, which will be Monday. Um, it's hardly ever worked. This year it's actually worked quite well, but that's just unusual. But my thinking here was that if we could close really ugly, if somehow, some some way, late this afternoon, all of a sudden the Dow, instead of being up 38 points now, is actually not down 38. It's got to be down 90. And then as we go into the close, it's down 150. And the S&P suddenly turns around instead of being up 12. It is down 18 or more. And then the news comes out over the weekend. Oh, bad action. One of the worst weeks we've had. Blah, blah, blah. Then next week we'd be ready for at least a decent rally attempt for a couple of weeks. That's a possibility, right? I mean, some of these stocks have really been hammered. Some of the really good stocks. I mean, look at Amazon. Amazon um, hasn't been hammered per se, but look at this weekly chart. Um, at a peak E, having achieved the 140s, uh, left side, right side price time match and everything, and now extending just by one pop to 145.86 last week above the 143.63 uh, level high peak D a couple of weeks ago. This is an ugly candle. And yet the nine is not even close to turning down in the weekly chart. Yes, we've got a sell mode in the daily. And that's what I'm saying. I think we need more time to let this resolve itself. The 121, 200 period exponential moving average in Amazon is, is an idea that I would have, even if there is a pop, and a decent rally in the next week or two, um, I'm still thinking that's the way we'd go. Look, yes, Van Eck retail ETF, 20% is Amazon. It, uh, it reaches 199 back in uh, November of 2021. Has a pretty decent rally. This is the RTH as a symbol trading right now up 71 cents at 170.79. It went to the dreaded H pattern. It went right down to the 200 period exponential moving average. Uh, yesterday. It just broke down. And look, there's the weekly chart that says this could be an A to B equals C to D. That's the classic T, F, and N lightning, lightning uh, pattern, uh, lightning bolt pattern. So, and here's your major uptrend support level. So I'm saying we cannot be too sanguine right now. We're not quite done. I'll be back in a moment. We'll go through the indices. Dow's up 28, S&P's up 10. Let's just check this E mid as we go into the break. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I just want to show you something. I had a question about uh, the semiconductors. Do I think it's going to pull back again? It's up a dollar twenty-five. This is it's just intraday. Uh, a couple of people. Um, we, I made it to stop on our most recent uh, SOXS. That's three times long. Uh, sorry, three times short. The SMHs tad too tight, and then it screamed from the ten seventies up in the to the twelves. Um, some people held it. Congratulations. Took some profits yesterday at the close or this morning. And just wanted to know, where, where would you go back in? I'm going to suggest something, and this is only for people who have actually traded this vehicle because you really have to understand it can move so quickly and percentage-wise it could really do a job on you. So just the way I'm looking at it now, um, and this is just its not even a recommendation. I'm just giving you parameters that I'd be looking at. So the SOXS has made a low today of 1176. It is trying to climb over the 200 period moving average of 1198 in the one minute chart. The five minute chart is at a pretty decent pullback. Uh, this is a, uh, let's go A, B, C, D, pulls back and goes A, alternate count, uh, A, B, C, D, alternate count E slash B, and then it goes to the requisite brand new A, B, C, D. And now it's got a peak D right there in the 10-minute chart, right? So it's starting to pull back. Um, I, I would just be real careful. You can see the, the, the buyers. This is what we've been seeing for, for weeks now. Buying comes in. Selling comes in. At the end of the day, the sellers seem to have the, um, the baton. They, have, they, they got the lead voice. But it's not like it's going straight down. I've been talking about this for weeks. I said, this is not usual. Bear, yes, on purely statistical terms, we're in bear market territory for me in the daily charts. Not the weekly. The weeklies are still holding really well. Even today, they're holding not too badly. So that's why I'm saying we might be using up a tremendous amount of time, and then we just need to fulfill some part of it in the weekly charts. So with that said, um, what I am going to tell you to do is to don't be over anxious on the um, on the buying the SOXS because it's three times. Or if you do, just have a little nibble on it. But watch it closely. I probably would say I'd prefer to be buying strength rather than weakness. The 11, 
uh, right here, the 1198, 200-period moving average is support. Now, if this is trying to form a ball formation after gapping down like this, I call it a ball even though it looks like a big cup, um, it should not take out, and this is going to be tough, it shouldn't take out the low that was made right here at 10.07 this morning of 11.76. So it's not. It doesn't sound like much. Big deal. Eleven eighty nine to eleven seventy six. Ah, you know, twenty cents. I'm, hey, it's a big deal. So what I am going to say to you is, you could split a tiny position, and that means the tiny position is even split just to get a sense of what you want to do. And right here at eleven eighty nine, I I I'd nibble. And just wait a minute, maybe by the end of the show, we'll have another position. But all I'm saying is that if it can start to go to 12, that means the estimators are coming down. That's where you'll start to some acceleration. That's where you might add a little bit. I don't know. I'm just saying to you, it has to work. And I have to tell you something in time. It has to be by right about there. Right about, let's see, 12 or 7. Right about 10... Hmm. I'm going to say 10.45. It already has to be moving up. I, I, time is of the essence, because the longer it goes sideways with the market trying to rally, the more you're using up both strength and weakness, and it means just, eh, meandering. All right, so let's just go back to the uh, E-mini right now, because that's also a good clue. Look, it made a peak B, pulled back sharply underneath the uh, 200 period moving up. It's, it's kind of showing some support. So that's what I'm saying. Don't don't over overthink this. Um, if you have a have a, have a really tight stop, I'd even say you could do it twice if you really want to get in position. But I wouldn't get in position, especially if by the end of the day the estimators are actually running quite sharply. They're at 142.17. If they go to 143.10, I, I wouldn't be thinking at all about the short. I'd have to say, hey, just wait. You've had a fantastic run. Don't waste money right now. In fact, I'd even say to you, I'm, I'm inclined to step aside, as you know, from my newsletter. I said today, let's just step aside. We know what we'd like to buy, and I also know what we'd like to short. So with that said, let's move on. So I want to run these things quickly now. I want to show you something absolutely I think is fascinating. Look, we waited and waited and waited for the Dow after the sell signal, or the day that we shorted on August the 1st, for the nine-period moving average to cross to pink. And then it finally did that right there on the 16th of August. The uh, weekly chart has taken out the left side low. This is the pattern that I call the dreaded H. For, for those of you, I, I know more and more people are starting to use this uh, particular technique of, of looking at the pattern, that patterns repeat over and over. Um, and this is the pattern that I've been talking about forever. I mean, since I came to TFNN back in 2002, 2003. Straight line up, straight line down. In fact, this is from the uh, um, my CD, Introducing the Travel Wave Methodology, and then a CD book. And now you've got a cup formation and an arch formation. There's a mix between one and two and one and three. Straight line down, goes to a peak A or B, and then fails, takes out the left side low. Takes out a peak A, goes to a new low. Takes out a peak A, takes it out on the left side, goes to a new low. Dreaded H, big arch formation. Within that, there's an H pattern that goes to a lowercase m. And what do we do? Uh, the left side low in the Dow was uh, right here on the 25th at 34,029. And today, we took out the left side low. That 200 period moving average of 33,914, it's beginning to act like a magnet. If we go even just a little bit low, if we can go to 33,980 at any point in the next two days, that 33,914 becomes a magnet and you can stay there for a little while. So we're going to be watching that very closely. So that that's that particular. But look at the weekly chart. Nine is still way over the 14. That's what I'm saying. It's a process. We've gone from the daily sell signal to a sell mode. We haven't, by the end of the day, I might say, the weekly has gone to a sell signal. Can you get a major buy signal when you've just gone to a sell signal? Oh, absolutely. Look, it's an H pattern. You can start to form a cup formation. If there's a close at any time in September, or preferably September, but it could go into October, without taking out this left side low, seriously taking out the 34,000 level, 
uh, you close above, not you, but the Dow closes above 33,000 and 35,070. At any point, it's going back to that left side high of 30, uh, 35,679 that was made back on August the 1st. I don't see it just yet. I'm going to be watching this closely. Look at the S&P, the weekly charts. S&P, we, we've taken out as here as well. We've taken out the left side low, uh, 43.33 was yesterday, uh, 43, what did I say, 28 was it? Yeah, 43.28 yesterday, we went below this left side low. Now we've got the h bat Is it going to become a dreaded h bat and going much lower? Well, the weekly chart says you've got to be careful, but that nine is still positive. Look at the QQQ and the weekly chart. Look, nine period moving average is still positive, and it hasn't taken out the left side low. I'll be back. Dow's up uh, 28, S&P's up 11. That's the chap. Tiger Dick Christian time. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, so the reason why I said I would hold off on anything with the SOXS, you can see how long it took. You know my rule of 136, uh, a rest period of one bar is fantastic on the way up or down. Three bars, that's good. When it gets to six bars, you almost have to restart the buy signal or the sell signal. And, and look how long it took here. And instead, it, it turned to a traded H, and now it's pulling back sharply. I just be real careful. I and, and the reason why I'm saying that is the ideal situation for me, having done this for decades and decades and decades, for any kind of a buy signal, you know, we've got some really good buys 
at the lows of, of the market. Um, and all I can say is I look for certain things and I'm not, I'm not in the position to say that I can see anything major other than a really decent pop-up. And a lot depends, of course, look, the dollar is, I wouldn't say struggling. It did the, the Chapman Wave falling axe. We did this, I'm not going to go through it again, even though it's technical Friday, break out of this particular pattern to the upside. And it's done that so many times. And this is a pattern that you can now respect and say, hey, um, it, it's worked well. At some point, it's going to fail. So you want to watch for failures because that's a clue to say, hey, the modus operandi has just changed. Hasn't yet. But we did get in the dollar today's highs 106, 105.78. Well, the high that I've been talking about for months, not weeks, but months, was 105.68. That was the high of the week of the 10th of March. And I said, we're just stuck in a rectangle. Anyone who says, oh, the dollar's collapsing, just keep looking at the rectangle. And now that it's gone up, anyone is saying, oh, the dollar's fantastic. No, look at this. The dollar is just having a corrective mode after coming down to the 200 period moving average. And now it's having a fabulous bounce. But this is what's impressive is on, on the daily chart here on the left, 87% in the stochastic flat. It's good. MACD is flat and positive. The nine is way over the 14. The price is way over the nine. But it is starting. An, oh, look, I drew this in some time ago. And you can see. I don't want to make this messy, but all I'm saying is that this dash green line keeps coming up to it and gets repelled, the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. But wait a minute. Look at the weekly chart. There's a chance that we close with a little doji candle today after a whole week's worth of, of rallying. Um, not much, but rallying nevertheless. And it's getting to the upper level of resistance in the weekly chart. So it's had a fabulous... Now, this pattern, when this rectangle pattern, when it breaks underneath, it very often goes just above and then comes back into the pattern. Well, if that's the case, let's look at the EUR USD, the euro. That's doing the peak D turnaround. It broke the um, up channel uh, support level inside track propellant zone. It's now repellent zone. The the nine period moving average is crossed negative in the weekly chart. The MACDs were very weak. Stochastic down at 11%. I don't have volume. That's why that blue line is straight because it's an index. It's a currency pair. Look, yeah, we've gone to a trough, a, a leg E to the downside. So that says, yeah, at leg E, you could, you could bounce a little bit, but there aren't any signals. And look at all the resistance you've got at 1.078, uh, the 200 period moving average, and it's at 1.066 right now. So it's got a long way to go, and you've got all those resistance. Look at the USD JPY. This is the yen currency pair, dollar yen currency pair. Did I type it in the wrong place? I wrote, typed it right on the chart again. Oops, type it in over here. USD JPY. Got it. Okay. And look at that. Peak D goes to peak E. G slash C. I always say be prepared. The majority of times, 90% of the time, in fact, it can go. 90%, uh, maybe 80-something percent, at a very high level of, of not certainty, but a chance that it can go to an E. And it's gone above that resistance level. The next one for the, uh, the euro is at 148.09, up 52 cents. The next level will be right here. And remember, when we're looking at uh, price symmetry, the, the further away you go, on the upside or the downside, the greater ch the greater the chance that you have to re. If it isn't an absolute obvious left side right side price time match with the price on the left side coming down or up to the price in the middle, which says the same number of bars to to the back again to that level, um, this you have to find a different plumb line. And this is my plumb line, a particular candle that I always look at. It just says, hey, if that's the case. We should get some kind of a top in the uh, euro dollar currency pair, maybe um, early early October. It could be sooner, of course. I, we're not the boss here, but it, this is 87.4. No, that's right. This is leg D. And you get into the Chapman Wave inside track resistance line, which is also the wedge target line. So this is, it says we're starting to get to areas of resistance. We haven't got there yet. Look at the monthly chart on the right. It's the same pattern. 
and that usually does go to a D, but we get very close to the left side high of 151.94 made in October of 2022. So all I'm saying is that I don't get this. And look at this. Um, if you look at gold, nice move up, up eight points at 1947, just stuck in the range. Could this turn into a U-shaped pattern that goes to a soft W pattern? Absolutely. So it's holding very nicely. Uh, let's go to G-O-L-D. This is uh, uh, Barrick. Uh, look, A, B, C, D. This is, you remember Chapman Wave, we're always looking for Ds, and that's where other things can happen. And what does it do? It goes peak A, B, C, D. I hadn't updated it. There it is. And the weekly chart says, eh, nothing to see. A monthly chart says, eh, do you mean I have to type this in? How many times in the, in 20 years have I done um, Barry Gold? Of course, it changed its name to GOLD, but I did it just the other day. Anyway, I lost the chart. Um, uh, yeah, ASA is the one I always look at because the South African miners, nothing to see here. Just in the low range, could have a bit of a bounce. Weekly chart doesn't look too good. So that's what I'm saying. And now you can go to silver. <clears throat> Silver's much nicer. Peak C just above the 200 period moving average in the daily. The weekly is just a big congestion area. <clears throat> Digesting gains. Let's look at PAAS, Pan American Silver. Had a fabulous move to a peak D back in August. Plummets down to the 15 area, runs up to almost 17. Peak C1 pulls back, goes to peak C2, fails, and has plummeted down. No, I, I just... The fact that the market Dow's up 51 right now and the S&P's up 21 is just telling me we aren't ready for any serious low. But we are getting closer, but I don't think we are there yet. So with that, we've raised cash for, for subscribers to the opening call. Um, and we, got, we, we did take, get taken out of a particular stock that I, we had for ages since March. And it did fabulously. We took nice percentage gains. The last one for the core position got taken out for a 10% gain because I just wasn't prepared to see it go from the 24 entry level. Uh, it hit 26 something to our uh, stop. We're out of that. And now it's trading at um, uh, 20 in the 24s. I, I'm ready to get back in, but I'm going to have to wait. And it's interesting because it's in an area. Um, it's in an area that has been the hot potato for a long time and not recently. Now, I just want to do this as we're wrapping up. I've got questions about FXI. Same thing, dreaded H with the nice. Is that a nice bounce today? Yeah, very nice bounce today. Um, yeah, stuck in a range. Range. Uh, you got, and Baba was a question. Was it Baba? Someone got a question. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So let me just get back to this here. Yeah. Look, uh, so uh, I was asked about uh, uranium. So uranium, this is the Cameco Corporation, uranium of fuel, huge move up. Look at this weekly chart, beautiful G slash B. Weekly chart is an F, maybe it's an F slash B because it had an instant restart. I'm calling it F for now, but the nines over the 14 prices, way over the nine. Um, the MACD is really strong, Cassix friend, 92%. And look, the MACD just deflected back up again. The stochastic in the daily is down at a 61, but that showed you that it had a little bit of weakness over there. And the, the uh, blue on balance volume is just steady right here. It has pulled back from that peak F, I'm calling that a peak F top. But here's the pattern that we're always looking at. Uh, coming down like this, coming down like that. Chapman falling X formation. Let me just clean it up a little bit there. And this is uranium, I mean, really. Um, and the crude oil, let me just put this together. Look at the left side chart. Here's your crude oil. Crude oil holding very nicely. I have no other way of counting it but to say it's a peak B. That says crude oil should go a little higher to a C and then maybe even a D. And then we got to watch out because the 9281 in the continuous contract, a uh, high that was made back here on the 11th of, week of the 11th of November 2022, 9281, it's a continuous contract. That price might change. Nothing else changes. In leg D right now with the doji candle says, got to watch this closely, but it is holding very nicely. If, I just want to add heating oil only because I'm talking about the oil. So heating oil did the same thing. Look at this beautiful price time match with the Chad Wave inside track, inside wedge target repellent line. It's going, gone right to that point, and it's at a peak D digesting gains. We're on the cusp of a lot of different things. If it's, all of this turns down right here, <clears throat> that'll be positive for the market, I think. But at the same time, look how beautifully it's held. So uh, with that said, uh, the question came in, uh, so is UUU still catching up to UEC? So you, 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 four U's. Is uh, the energy is energy fuel right? Energy fuels Inc. Uranium had a big move up to a G slash C. Now we often see that G slash Cs go to D, and it's up today, 55 cents, up six point, almost seven percent, at 8.44. This is all of this is not that good news for the uh, for the general market because it's saying, wow, alternative uh, energy and all that, um, and the UEC which we still own. From the 360, I think 364 area, trading at um, 531 right now. Um, that's a very nice move. It has the same kind of triangle uh, pennant formation. So we're going to be watching this closely. But what a nice move. It's up 7.6% today at 530. So all I can say is that there are so many mixed messages and cross currents in this market. This is real riptide. This is riptide action. 
it just when you least expect it, suddenly th something goes a different way. So all I can say is that <clears throat> this is a, a period to be a little bit careful. Don't be you don't be anxious to buy, and I even wouldn't be too anxious right now to short and this is in specific areas. For instance, Toll Brothers now is starting to really pull back. Look at that weekly chart. The, look at the weekly. I measured. I showed you the measured move from the left side, vertical move to the right side. All the technicals were weakening. On balance volume was very good, and it popped higher. Now it's starting to firm. That just says to me that the TLT um, breaking down like this, I would be a little suspicious to say that gap can be filled uh, without a little bit of backing and filling first. So yields, look at the TBT. The TBT had a really nice move. It didn't make a new high today, not yet, I don't think. So that was 37.49, 37, 37.49, oh, an equal move. So this is a leg C. To get to the D, if it's going to do that, it needs to make a lower high and then another higher high. And this gets you, I was doing this yesterday, I'm going to do it again. This gets you to this cup formation that says round about now, you should be trying for the 39.22 high, 3.92% of October, uh, this October of 2022, uh, almost a year ago. So, okay, with that said, uh, FXI, I did that, I did that. Baba, uh, yes, uh, GT said uh, call positions. Yeah, great. I don't know where you got the calls. If you got the calls yesterday, this is fantastic. 84, uh, it hit 83.76 yesterday. And today's high is 88.88. That's fabulous if you had the calls. Congratulations. Um, but I would just, I, I would get out of anything that makes me that money that quickly because this pattern is making lower lows and lower highs. And that's the, the trend is lower lows and lower highs. So I want you to do some things here. EEM was a question. Yeah, this is the emerging markets having a very nice island reversal pop up. But island reversals, um, in uh, anything that trades overseas, is, that's not a big deal at all because it trades before this market opens. Therefore, you're going to get gaps like gold stocks, silver stocks, uh, oil stocks. That's, that's what happens. So you has your dreaded H and it closed within a day of a high. Well, it hasn't closed, but so far it looks like it's done that. So this can go to a lowercase H that goes to a lowercase M pattern, weekly chart and EEM, emerging market ETF. At 38.63 right now, up 61 cents. Doesn't look that great. Uh, K, um, K, uh, Kaori. So this is Kaori. Is the I haven't updated this for a little while because we've been so disappointed in the action of the S&P Regional Banking ETF. Look at this daily chart, trough D, leg E to the downside. This is a horrible move. Trading in the 49s. <coughs> Uh, just a month or two ago, and now it's in the 41s. Uh, and this is a whole index, a banking index sector. Uh, this is not good at all. But the weekly chart is uh, negative, but it hasn't taken out the left side low of the 34s way back in April of last year, of this year. But the monthly chart is really struggling. So I, I can just tell you that this is not a market to kind of dismiss and say, ah, it's just a little digestive phase in the sense that. If you look at some of the stocks within some of the indexes, indexes that used to be leaders, like a band, look, this is XLF. It goes quickly, peak A, B, C, D, E, and then it gives back a huge chunk. Weekly chart is not too bad. The nine's still over the 14, but you've got a stock like Bank of America, already one of the great banks. Um, wow, look at that. That's ugly, ugly, ugly. And then you've got a Berkshire Hathaway, which is a bank in the sense that, yeah, it's like a bank, but it isn't a bank. BRK.B, and look at this, uh, B, uh, B shares. <laughs> Pulling back from your peak D um, day in the daily, leg D in the weekly, and that's why I'm saying I, I don't see this as a major turning point in the market, even if we get this kind of, this kind of climax VIX index next week or uh, some kind of a buy signal, I still think lower lows and lower highs is the theme. I don't want to change that. Um, oh, I didn't finish that. Yes, sorry. Did you see, uh, this is a good football. I think it's got tenant formation. 
I don't think so. I'll be back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, this long segment. I just want to do a couple of things here. Uh, I was asked to look at Syntas. Syntas, yeah, that has made at least a shorter term top. There's the double top potential um, at the... Um, Last week's high in the 520s is at 509 right now. I'm just watching this closely, and that's why I'm saying I think we've, we're in a big digestive phase because this is the Sintas core overalls, uniforms, rentals. It's not breaking down. It's near all-time highs. But it's interesting to watch Marriott Hotels uh, had a fabulous move up into August to the 210 level, and now it is down at the 195. It's not a big deal, but it is arching over in the weekly chart. Just wanted to go through Apple. Yes, Apple uh, having a nice day today, but th this is quadruple bottom that we're looking at. Will it break out below? Will it break below the 171 level, the 200 period moving average? It looks like it's going to try to do that. The other thing I'm looking at here is I um, uh, did Amazon Apple and uh, oh, Jay, look at this. Mm -mm. This is the Jacob Solutions. Um, not a bad pattern. So some of these stocks are actually holding quite well. Uh, this is in the engineering area. So I'm, I'm just being very careful. I'm saying there are signs of weakness, but there are signs of strength as well. 
there are some sectors and all those AI stocks. I mean, look at this AI. What is this? AI is the uh, C3.AI Inc. Wow, making lower lows and lower lows and lower lows. STEM was one we were looking at. Uh, we had once, we had a really nice profit. Haven't gone into it for ages. STEM Inc., Clean Energy Solutions Storage, EV Solar. The ENVX was another one we once had. We don't have any more. It's at 12.35. It's taken the left side law of 13.08. Outlook, yes, the trend lines for Energix Corporation. There's a lot to go through. So next week's going to be a really fascinating week. We've already used up what could have been a horrible day today to make a decent low Monday or Tuesday. Now uh, it's just stalling that whole process. Have a wonderful rest of the day and have a wonderful weekend um, and just good trading today. <laughs>